I was telling the, the, the group in, other, in the, uh, the autumn ministry room there this morning that we need to learn to think big, think good, not just big, but think good about God. Just like we need to learn to think good about others. As I go along, you will understand what I'm trying to say. But I, I share with them that uh, my, all, my, my, my conclusion and all the call uh, taught is that we need to learn to think good about God. Isaiah chapter 30 verse 18 says, Isaiah chapter 13, the 30 verse 18 says, Therefore the Lord will wait that he may be gracious to you. And therefore he will be exalted that he may have mercy on you. For the Lord is a God of justice. Blessed are all those who wait for him. Blessed are all those who wait for him. But then the first phrase says that, Therefore the Lord will wait that he will be gracious to you. So, so that is, you, you have to come with that expectation, knowing that actually God has been waiting to bless you. Oh, He has been waiting Sunday after Sunday to bless you, to provide for you, even before you can even ask. Right? And, and the prophet said this uh, prophecy it, that during the time when the Israelites, they were rebellious against God. They were doing this, uh, they, they, instead of uh, trusting God to deliver their nation, when the enemy come and attack them, they went and made alliance with other hidden nations so that they can protect them. And so God says, why do you do that? I want to be great. I'm gracious, God. I want to, I'm waiting to bless you. Why don't you just come to me? God wants to bless His people. If only, He says, blessed are all those who wait for Him. Are you overwhelmed with the pain of sufferings? Because sometimes when you are in pain, it's difficult to wait. How to wait? I mean, your, your wife, you know, is about to deliver and in pain in the, uh, you know, uh, and, and you, how, how to ask her to wait? Uh, she's in pain, you yeah? You have to immediately rush her to the delivery room. So cannot wait. <laughs> or sometimes you, are, you have pain in your physical being because of sickness and, and you can't wait for, you know, God to touch you and heal you. So you have to do something. I mean, I w I'm not saying that you cannot do anything. It's not that you cannot go and see a doctor, you cannot go and take a Panadol, you cannot go and you know, look for a, uh, get a surgery done. Uh, but have you, you know, actually wait on God? Have you actually asked God? Have you actually, you know, depend upon God? So sometimes circumstances is such that it, it could push us out us to a corner, and we find it difficult to wait. Some, and, and our out time is really out. We, we cannot wait anymore. We, we did try to wait. Not that you didn't try to wait to make that decision before you make that crucial decision. But the, the fact is, you, 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 it's as if you didn't hear anything, or you don't know exactly what God wants, and so you force yourself to make a decision, to make a choice. It's as if there's no more time to wait for an answer from God, to hear from God. And so I must do something, I must decide. Especially those uh, uh, advertisements, they say, oh, three more days, you know, the, this offer ends. So you wait one, two, three days. And then one more hour. Wow. You panic already. Should I buy or should I not buy? And uh, should I keen or not? You know? And uh, so, so, so you really is being forced to make a decision. But you don't really know whether is that what pleases God or not. Is that what we really need? Is that what God would also approve of? Do you really have to do that? So sometimes is we feel as if our out time is really out and we've got no more time to wait. And you cannot wait anymore. But I want you to know that God's word is His promise. 
God's word is his promise. In 2 Kings chapter 7, verse 1, Then Elijah said, Hear the word of the Lord. This is what the Lord says. About this time tomorrow, a seer of the finest flour will sell for a, for a shekel, and two seers of barley for a shekel at the gate of Samaria. See, this uh, Elijah came and, uh, or rather, responded and gave this word to those soldiers sent by the king. And because at that time, uh, their, their nation was surrounded by the Aramean soldiers. And it was for many days. And so they are, they are really running, running low in food and water. And, and so they are desperate. They are, they are crying out. And, and the king also don't know what to do. And uh, so God say through the prophet, he says that about this time tomorrow, in other words, something is going to happen within 24 hours. Something is going to happen within 24 hours. Tomorrow, a seer of the finest flour, a, a, a two seers of the barley, they will be sold for only a shekel at the gates of Samaria. Wow, the people have no food to eat. Every, every home has, is depleted of provision. And here the prophet says, in 24 hours time, you're going to have plenty and the food will become dirt cheap. God's word is his promise to you. That's why you must read the word of God. You must know what the word of God says because the word of God is his, is his promise to each one of us so that we know that we have a hope in God. We don't have to feel as if we, must, we are pressured in life. That we have to do something out of, you know, desperation. Most of the time when you make a decision out of desperation and uh, you find that a lot of times you, you make wrong decision and you end up regretting. Why did I do that? Why did I say that? Why did I think this way? Because we did not look to God's word. Doubt dishonor God's promise. Doubt dishonor God's promise. 2 Kings chapter 7, verse 2. The officer on whose arm the king was leaning said to the man of God, Look, even if the Lord should open the floodgates of the heaven, could this happen? The prophet Elijah answered, you will see it with your own eyes, but you will not eat any of it. When that, that officer, that commander, sent by the king to come to Elijah and for, for, for knowledge, for help, when Elijah gave them a, a, a word from the Lord, the promise of, from God, here he says, come on, Elijah, who do you think you are? How, even if God opens the floodgate, how can we get it in the next 24 hours? So much provision. How can it ever happen? There's no way. How can it ever happen? Doubt dishonor God. You are not doing justice to God when you don't believe that God can do it for you. When you don't believe God's word, you don't believe God, that means... If God's word says it and you still don't believe, then you cannot, then you are doubting God and you don't honor God. So if you don't honor God, then you don't receive it. That's it. God works in mysterious ways. God works in mysterious ways. 2 Kings chapter 7, verses 3 to 8. Verse 3 says, Now there were four men with leprosy. At the entrance of the city gate, they said to each other, why, should, why stay here until we die? Verse 4, If we say we go into the city, the famine is there, and we will die. And we, if we stay here, outside the city wall, we will die. So let's go over to the camp of the Arameans and surrender. If they spare us, we live. 
If they kill us, then we die. Very smart thinking, right? <laughs> okay, so there are four lepers. They are not allowed to enter the city because of their leprosy. The law, the, 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 the Judaistic law, does, does not permit them to come to live inside the city wall. And so they, they are also having, experiencing that lack of food. And so they thought to themselves, you know, it's a die-die situation. It's not a win-win situation. So why not we just go over there like, at least, you know, just see how it works out. And so at dusk, they got up and went to the camp of the Arameans. When they reached the edge of the camp, no one was there. For the Lord has caused the Arameans to hear the sound of chariots and horses and a great army. So that they say to one another, Look, the king of Israel has hired the Hittite and the Egyptian kings to attack us. Verse 7, So they got up and fled in the dust and abandoned their tents and their horses and their donkeys. And they left the camp as it was and ran for their lives. No wonder there's nobody to greet the four lepers. Verse 8, The man who had leprosy reached the edge of the camp, entered one of the tents, and ate and drank. Wow, plenty of food. Let's eat, drink, and be merry. Okay, then they took silver. After eating, drinking, you know, summer food already. Look around. Wow, got silver, gold, and clothes, and went off and hid them. So they took the gold, silver, and beautiful clothing and keep it, hide it somewhere. They returned and entered another tent and took some things from it and hid them also. It's very natural. I think if I was one of them, I also do the same. So many, you know. What, why waste it? Okay, collect. Not enough. Wow, got some more, no. Take some more. You go to the third tent, you see some more. Take some more. That's, that's human being. We want more. You have one house, you want a second house. You got a second, you want a third house. You got one car, you get a second car. I was just telling my wife, this, because we saw one of our church person driving a small car, and he was, she was surprised, you know, because this person is not a low-income person. So I said, no, no, no. I'm sure he has another car, a more beautiful car, a bigger car. You know? He's just driving the small one to church this morning, that's all. We, 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 it's all right. <laughs> you know? uh, but these people, they, they, they just keep on wanting more and more. And so we find that God does work in a myst- mysterious way where uh, you know, the, the enemy, somehow they panic. For nothing. They are hearing voices. They are seeing things. When there's nothing, they saw something. When there's no noise, they heard a lot of noise. And they panicked and they ran. That's, I mean, of course you can say that is uh, human responses to you know, strange sound and sight thing, you know. Uh, but it has to be God. God worked in a very mysterious way. And so they ran off. And so that's why there's plenty of food. A decision which honors what God has done. We need to make decisions that honor what God has done. 2 Kings chapter 7, verse 9. Then these four lepers, they said to each other, what we are doing is not right. This is a day of good news. And we are keeping it to ourselves. If we wait until daylight, punishment will overtake us. Let us go at once and report this to the royal palace. Wow, somehow, suddenly, their conscience pricked them. We we still have conscience, even though we know, and the Bible tells us, that our conscience has been seared. It has been burned. And so you cannot depend upon only conscience alone to know God, to understand God, or to do do things. But the fact is, God can still use and speak through our conscience. And so they they were gripped in their conscience. And they say, what we are doing is not right. Suddenly they realize, 
I, I think if we would just stop for a while and think and pray and wait in God's presence and then see whether everything that we have been doing, everything we have said today to someone, everything we have done last week, you know, just think about it in God's presence and say, God, what do you think of it? Ask God, what do you think of it? Is that what pleases you? Am I doing the right thing? I'm doing, am I making the right choice in life? If we have done that, then we won't do the wrong things. You won't do the wrong things. And you will, do the, you will make the right decision. A decision that will honor God. Our conscience can still speak to us if we allow it to do so. We just need to stop and pause around. Every day, stop for a while. Morning before you go out, pause for a while and spend time in God's presence and say, God, today I've got these things to do. I've got these places that I want to go to. God, don't ask God straight away, bless it. God, what do you think of it? God, are you happy with it? Then let God speak to you. And then you say, God, bless it. Then in the middle of the day, stop and pause for a while and pray and ask God. Find a quiet corner and, and say to God, God, I've done so many things. I'm very happy with myself. W what do you think, God? Are you happy with me? Have you thought of that? Try it. Then you will, you will find that it will change your life. It will change the way. Maybe after that prayer in the, mid, in the noontime, you go back to your office, your attitude change. The way you talk to your, your, your staff change. The way you, you relate with your husband, your wife, your children change. When you learn to stop for a while and ask God, God, am I saying the right thing or not? In the night before you sleep, kneel before your bed, kneel beside your bed and Pray. Ask God. God, am I, you know, I'm very tired today. I've done a lot of things. You know. I've said this. I've gone these places. God, I, I'm happy with it. What about you? What do you think, God? Okay. And let God speak to you. If, if, you, if the Lord assures that you have been doing fine and good, then you can, be, you can lie down on your bed and you can sleep well. Some people cannot sleep well. They got a very nice, comfortable bed, but cannot sleep. Thick, sleeping tablet also cannot sleep. <laughs> you know, too many things, too many troubles, too many worries, too many wrong things done, and it, it kind of you know bothers you. you. You don't even realize it, maybe, but you just cannot sleep. But God can help you. If only you would ask God, God help me. God speak to me. Cleanse me and make me whole. God, help me to change. So make decisions that honour God. God's word never fails. 2 Kings chapter 7, verse 14 to 15. Therefore, they took two chariots and horses, and the king sent them in the direction of the Syrian army, saying, Go and see. And they went after them to the Jordan. And indeed, all the road was full of garments and weapons which the Syrians had thrown away in their haste. So the messengers returned and told the king. The king is very smart. He sent two chariots out first. He heard the lepers say, Wow, there's nobody there. There's plenty of food there. But he did not go out, you know. Even though he knew what the prophet had said, you know, God is going to bless and provide and there will be abundance. No, he, he don't want to go out first. He asked his soldiers to go out. Send two chariots to go out. So if they come back, good. If they don't come back, too bad. So they went and they saw, wow, and they came back and report, yeah, it's true. King, there is no enemy soldiers there. In fact, plenty of weapons, plenty of gold and silver. And so you find that God never, what? Failed. Senior pastor always asks her to fill up the last word. God never, that's right, God never failed. What he has said will come to pass. And a lot of things are said in the Bible. But do you know or not? 
You need to find out. You need to study it. You need to understand it. So that you know that your, help, your, your needs can be met in Christ Jesus. Because God's word, it never fails us. What he has said will definitely come to pass. I mean, how can God fail, isn't it? How can God fail? If God cannot keep his word, what he said, and he, he don't keep it, if he says, let there be light and there's no light, how? Cannot. It cannot bring, if he cannot bring what he has promised to pass, then who else can we depend upon? If God cannot do it, then who else can do it? Your friend can help you? Your, your, your boss can help you? Your banker can help you? Your, your doctor can help you? Yeah, I think most of them can help you a little here and there. But who really can help you? Who do you really trust? Who do you really depend upon? And have you searched the word? And have you understood it? And are you obeying it and trusting in it? Putting all your bet on it. He who does not believe will fail. God's word will never fail. But the person who does not believe it, he will fail. Because in verse 17, now the king has appointed that same officer on whose hand uh, he leaned to have charge of the gate. So this, uh, this commander was put at the gate of the city and, and to, to, to jaga, to watch out, you know, for, for the people to go out to the enemy camp. Because there are plenty of food there. But the people trampled him in the gate and he died. Just as the man of God has said, who spoke when the king came down to him. The consequences of unbelief is detrimental. I'm not trying to put fear or any kind of thing, you know. But the fact is, there's always consequence. There's always a consequence. Everything we do, everything we you know, act on, there's always a response or a consequence, a result from it. And so if it is not faith in God, if it is not of what God wants, then you have to struggle yourself. You struggle through it yourself because you choose it. You choose to marry so and so. So you struggle through it. You choose to work this place because it gives you more or what. I don't know. Yeah. Then you, you have to put all the effort, you have to put all the time. And then maybe you find that you, you don't have time for your own self already. You don't have time for God. You don't have time for your family. It can happen that way. It's not always it has, it has to be this way, right? But it can happen that way. So, so what we do is very important. What we decide is very important. And if it is not upon, based upon what God has said to us, then it can bring about detrimental results. And we are the loser. That commander who, 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 who says that, how can it ever happen? No miracle can happen. Then he don't see it. That's it. If you can't believe God for that miracle to happen, of course you don't get the miracle. See? It's miraculous. Within 24 hours, things get so cheap. And you may even lose everything that you hope for in life. We need to learn to think highly of God. We need to think highly of God. Think of Him as a good God. God is a good God. Don't think of God as a very judgmental God. Yes, He's a God of judgment. He just, he passed, he's just God. But He's a good God. He's a God of love. God is... God. His words are good. His words are not to harm us, not to trouble us, not to cause us to, to, to be deprived. God has good thoughts and good feelings towards you. And God in His plans and His actions for you, they are all good. It may seem as if it is not good, or maybe it's not good enough for you, because that's, you're thinking of something else, but you get another thing. But do you know whether what you think about is what God wants and what you're getting now? Is that what God is blessing you with? 
If it is, if you can recognize it is, be thankful to God. Be thankful to God. And, and God never fail you. He will never fail you. He will never disappoint you. The king said in 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 33, before this um, miraculous uh, event, the king says, why should I wait for the Lord any longer? See, the king, he was walking through the city wall. And he saw two women, two mothers. And they were quarreling, they were fighting. And the king asked, what is it? What, what's happening? And one of the mothers say, this woman said that we will make a pact. You kill your, dog, your, your baby today and let's eat. Then tomorrow I'll kill mine. And then we eat because there's no more food. It went to such a, such a desperate situation. And the king heard it. And then this mother, who had already killed the baby yesterday and eaten it, today asked that mother to kill the baby. But the mother refused. The mother go and hit the baby. And so that's why the fight and the quarrel. And the king saw it and he heard it. And it was so broken inside of him. And he says, why should I wait for the Lord any longer? Why should I wait for the Lord any longer? He make a big mistake. First of all, it is his wrong that has brought about all this evil, all these bad things, unfortunate things to happen to the, to the city. It is his own wicked ways, irreligious ways that has brought about this, this punishment from the, the enemy soldiers, God has allowed that. And he says, why should I wait for God anymore? He thinks evil of God. He says, God is the one who, who brings about all these things. God never do anything for me. God never do anything. He sees these two women fighting like this, eating their own baby, and yet didn't send any deliverance. He blamed God. He blamed God for nothing. But Isaiah have a different view of God. Isaiah chapter 30 verse 18. Isaiah thinks good about God. Isaiah says, Therefore the Lord will wait that He may be gracious to you and therefore He will be exalted that He may bring mercy on you. For the Lord is the God of justice. Blessed are all those who wait for Him. You know, it's not you waiting for God. It's actually God waiting for you. You thought that you're waiting for God's answer. Uh, it's not. It's not that way. It looks like it's not. God is waiting for you. God wants to be gracious to you. He wants to show Himself powerful in your life, in your situation. He wants to show mercy and kindness and goodness to you. Blessed are you who wait for Him. That's why we wait on the Lord. For He waits for us. Wait in, prayer, in prayerful silence. In spirit, it's a spiritual workout for us. Psalms 119 verse 84, it tells us, How many days, the psalmist says, how many, how many are the days of your servant? Because the psalmist was going through difficult times in his life. He said, God, how many days do I have to wait? When will you execute judgment on those who persecute me? But do you know that times of waiting actually makes us stronger? Because we have been exercising patience and we exercise faith within us when we wait upon God. The longer you wait, the stronger your faith becomes. There was this man, he had a house and good view in front of him. But somehow, a wall was erected and built in front of his house. And he couldn't see that beautiful view anymore. And he complained us and pray God please remove that wall and God said to him you go and push the wall and so he went he went out and pushed the wall but the wall didn't fall down 
So you maybe you think push seven days, then it will fall. No, he pushed seven days, it didn't fall. He pushed many months and into the years, it didn't fall. Then he says, God, what's happening? You asked me to push the wall. Uh, it's still blocking my view. All the goodness that I have, you know. But then his neighbors commented, Hey friend, you look much stronger. You now got muscles, you know. Oh, he didn't realize that. As he was pushing and pushing on the wall, he has developed strength and muscle. Waiting in prayerful silence is a spiritual workout for you and for me. Wait on the Lord, for He waits for you. I want to pray with you at this time. And before I pray, I think we will sing this chorus. And when we sing this chorus, I want to invite you to come to this altar and pray. And it is your moment. It's your time. It's whether you want it or the one. You can come, you can do one, you can remain up there. It's for you to come, it's open. God is waiting for you. God is waiting for you. Jesus into his life and so before I request the pastor to come and pray for us to bless us I want to also find out and ask if you are standing here this morning you have been here to church many, very often but you have said that you are not ready to receive Jesus what about today what about today do you still want to struggle with your own ways, the way that you have been living? Or would you surrender to God and say, God, I want to receive you into my life? Or you could be struggling with difficult circumstances and you find it very tough. You find it very difficult. You cannot handle it anymore. And you know that you need Jesus. You need God. Because you know that God loves you. And He's always ready to help you. And you say, Pastor, please pray for me. I want to believe in this Jesus this morning. And if this is what you desire, put up your hand now, your right hand, so I can see it. You, you want to believe in Jesus, and this is your first time, sorry, it's your first time believing in Jesus. Put up your right hand. Anyone like this? Anyone like this? Father, your word says, They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Yes. They shall run and not be weary. Yes, oh God. We thank you, Lord, that you are renewing strength Amen. in the hearts and minds of those yes, who God. are turning Jesus. towards you. Yes, oh Father. Rejecting fear and Amen. doubt Amen. and confessing faith in a living God, a gracious God, a good God. Somebody say amen. 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 Ex exercising our faith, knowing that Jesus never fails us That's when right. we trust Him. Yes. And Lord, there are many that are standing at this altar. And so we commit them to you. Yes. That as they look to you, you will not fail them. Yes. yes you will God. bring healing. You will bring deliverance. Oh, yes. You will bring your peace. Amen. You will bring hope into their hearts and lives. Jesus. You will cause them to walk, Lord, in the strength. Not by might, Hallelujah. not by power, but by the anointing and the grace yes, of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, we thank you for those who are opening their hearts Hallelujah. to confess you as Savior and yes. as Lord. I pray the hand of your salvation, oh, yes. the gift of your salvation will be their portion this morning. Amen. That they will go rejoicing because Amen. their sins have been forgiven. Amen. That they are born again. Amen. They are a child Amen. of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I pray the blessings of God upon each and every one of us standing here today. Oh, yes. 
that none of us, Lord, will walk away empty-handed. Yes, that yes. we will walk away, Lord, with the blessings of God. Amen. We will go away, Lord, saying that we will be a witness and a testimony yes. of your graciousness towards us. Yes. But we pray and we ask it in Jesus' wonderful Amen. name. Amen. In Amen. Jesus' wonderful name. Amen.